Welcome, Trust Builders. I'm Sue Dyer, and this is Lead with Trust, where we explore how leaders can build their business on a foundation of trust and reap the rewards of becoming the top performer in their market. Leaders that understand how to use and leverage trust are uniquely positioned to disrupt their industry and dominate their market. Distrust of businesses and business leaders is at an all-time high. Trusted businesses must have trusted leaders, and your team, your customers, and your vendors are waiting for you to step up and elevate the level of trust in your business. My hope is that this podcast can help you start your trusted leader journey. Hey, Construction Nation, this is Sue Dyer, and welcome to episode 39 of Lead with Trust. And I wanted to share just a couple things before we got started with this episode. Uh, Over the last few weeks uh, for episode number 33 and episode number 37, I have developed some free resources for you. And I wanted to just remind you that you can go and grab those at sudico.com, S-U-D-Y-C-O.com slash either 33 or 39. And so let me tell you what's at each of those. So at for episode 33, I talked about my journey. And so I created a free resource so that you could go on a four-day journey yourself to kind of step back and get a better feel for where you're at and how you're feeling Uh, and what you want to do in your career uh, for your life's work. And for episode number 37, uh, we talked about excellence. And so I created a free resource that is called the Project Team Excellence Evaluation. And it's a great tool for you to use and your team to really evaluate You know, are you doing the things you need in order to become excellent? And are you excellent? So those free resources are there for you. And you can just grab them anytime at pseudocode.com and then either 33 or 37. So let's dive in. Today's episode is about uh, three steps that you can take to drive out fear and create trusted leadership. And I, you know, I just kicked off a partnering session last week uh, where the team gave me a list of their risks, which isn't unusual at all. Uh, And then I got an email from the construction executive asking me not to use the list. They were afraid to share with the owner's team their frustration and the fear they had as they were beginning this project. So this really isn't all that unusual. Of course, you don't want to just dump on your counterparts, but to be afraid to share your perspective, your needs, your truth, what you see, maybe even your ideas, is really a great example of how fear creeps into our projects. Fear prevents trust from building because you aren't telling each other your truth. Fear actually drives out trust. And the team is left unable to resolve the issues and the project is damaged. It just isn't what it could be, maybe should be. So this week, I am going to share with you these three steps you can take to drive out fear and create trusted leadership. So let's get started with step number one. Okay, step number one is use the partnering approach. And there's two parts to the partnering approach. And I outline this in great detail in my book, The Trusted Leader. But this is what you really need to do for these two parts. Okay, so let's start with step number one, use the partnering approach. There are two parts to the partnering approach. These two parts help you think and act like a trusted leader. So you create a high trust culture. 
you can find a list of the two parts in detail, a list of all of them uh, in the show notes, uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast. So just go down to the show notes. Uh, I will walk you through each of these in the later podcast because they need to go into some detail. And of course, they're in great detail in my book, The Trusted Leader, if you wanted to grab that. So the first part is the mindset that is created by the 10 partnering principles. These act like a high trust point of view that allows you to create high trust intentions. You can find a list of the 10 partnering principles again in the show notes. Uh, this helps you think and act like a trusted leader so that you create the high trust atmosphere. And let me just talk a little bit about uh, what a principle is and why the intentions work. So some of you may be a familiar with the concept of the Pygmalion effect. And this was research that was done, I believe it was in the 30s and uh, in a school. And so the first day of school, they invited two teachers into the principal's office and uh, at separate times, not together. And so the first teacher went in and talked to the principal. And the principal said, welcome back. Because you are such an extraordinary teacher, we have put together a class for you this year that is the most challenged class we have ever seen. But we know with your great aptitude for teaching, you will be able to a great job with these students. So go forth and have a great year. But they swore the teacher to silence about this special class. They weren't allowed to tell anyone. So the second teacher goes in and talks to the principal. And the principal says, welcome to this year. You are just such a great teacher. We have put together a very special class for you. This is a class of the best and the brightest students we have ever seen in our school. And we know that you will rise to the occasion to really have a great year with these students. So go forth and have a great year. And again, swore the teacher to silence that no one was to know this. So the year proceeded and the teachers taught their classes along with all the other classes in the school. And at the end of the year, they took the standard achievement tests. And what they found is that in the class where the teacher was told that the class was a class of the most challenged students, every single student in that class scored lower than anyone ever had on that test in the history of the district. And in the class where the teacher was told that the students were the best and the brightest, every single student scored higher than anyone ever had in the history of the district. Now, the truth about these classes was that there was nothing unique about them at all. They were just a normal group of kids. The only difference was what their teachers were told. So this is called the Pygmalion, I can't talk, please edit that. This is called the Pygmalion effect. And believe me, the Pygmalion effect is alive and well in your business and on your projects. And it all comes from you as the leader. And you may be saying, well, I, I'm not really a leader. I'm, I'm a project leader. I'm a, a field superintendent. You influence people right from where you are. And of course, the, the higher up you are the chain of command, the more influence you have and the more important this becomes. So it, having clear intentions to create trust is very important. And that's what these 10 principles allow you to do. So the second part of the partnering approach is to get your people in concert with this and to get them to act in a high trust manner, probably when you're not even around and no one is around, but this is how they operate. And this is created by using the six partnering values. It helps you to bring your intentions into harmony with the whole team. The values foster the attitudes and attitudes create behaviors. 
And of course, you can't see values, but you experience them in people's attitudes and you see them play out in their behaviors. So if you want to create high trust behaviors, you must always, always, always start with high trust values. And so the uh, six partnering values tell you exactly what the six values are that we have seen work to base your organization on. And let me just talk a second about why values in this way are also so important. I talk to people who are you know, growing their business or they've got a huge project or a big initiative going on. And uh, you know, so it can be very difficult when you're scaling to get people to on board and aligned. Values help you do that. So that if something happens, that you know is unpredictable and you couldn't know but people are around those values will inform what they do and they will be very clear about it so the values are very important i know one of my uh, on my podcast before uh the director at san francisco international airport talked about how when they had a crash a uh, very unfortunate, very devastating thing. Uh, but because of their partnering values, uh, everyone knew what to do and everybody stepped in to do the right things based on those values. And it could never have happened because it was all happening so fast and so much need to, to you know, take care of what was happening at so many levels from the devastation to the people, to the investigation, to the runway, to other air traffic, to the families. There's just so many things that you could not have controlled it all other than by values. And so the values are very, very important. So of course, in my, my book, The Trusted Leader, uh, I lay out the values, I lay out the intentions or with principles, uh, but then I also will share with you a framework on how to train your brain to think and act like a trusted leader. So uh, these two parts do take practice. And, uh, and so you can use the book for that. And I also have a journal that you can use where you write down uh, the different things that you are trying to implement within your day uh, an intention and, and incorporate it into all the stuff you're doing. So you have an intention for that day and incorporating the values into that as well. And then looking and observing what happens so that then you begin to create an arsenal of things you know work and, and you get better and better and better at it. So that's step one, use the partnering approach. Step two, grow trusted leaders. So as you work to boost the level of trust within your business or your team or your organization, you will want to train others to become trusted leaders as well. You, re you will want to really have trusted leaders at all levels and in all the different areas of your business. The more trusted leaders you have, actually, the faster you will build a high trust culture and the farther you will be able to take your business. Now, this really isn't kumbaya. It is about trusting each other to share your perspective and learn from one another and those stakeholders who are involved in whatever activity you're doing so you can get better and better. It doesn't mean that you're never going to disagree. In fact, differences of opinion and perspective is really what you want. And that's what allows for the collective wisdom to come forth. And with that, it can help lead you exactly to what you need to do. Alignment towards shared goals based on a shared purpose, it really focuses the team's effort, and then creativity can happen. So there really isn't any divergent interest working against you. 
everyone's working towards the common goals based on the structure of common values. And it really does remarkable things. I call it the nozzle effect. It's like putting a nozzle on a garden hose. All of a sudden you have the same amount of water, but when you put the nozzle on it, you get exponentially more force, more momentum. Same thing happens in your business or your team. Hope you're enjoying this show. Every time you and your team step foot onto a construction project, you bring your business culture with you. For any construction project to succeed, there must be a high trust culture. It doesn't matter if you're in planning, design, construction, or startup phases. The more trust you bring and build, the better your results. I've created a free resource for you, the Trusted Leader Profile so you can know exactly the level of trust you bring to your business and projects and what you can do to boost trust. You can grab that at sudico.com slash profile. That's S-U-D-Y-C-O dot com slash profile, P-R-O-F-I-L-E. And I hope that you'll remember that always high trust equals high performance, and it really depends on you. Now back to the show. So grow trusted leaders at all levels, help them to understand the, how, what the initiatives are, what the intentions are, what the principles are and the values. Step number three, create a trust strategy. So in st- step number two, I talked about having everyone be aligned and why not align everyone as you're growing your business on a foundation of trust behind trust and use trust as your strategy. You'll see that amazing things begin to happen. Uh, And so when you do this, do your people will know clearly what the number one thing is and is valued within your business. And when they know that they can do a tremendous amount in their everyday life to make sure that is happening at all levels in everything that they're doing. And there's really nothing else you could do that's more important than getting your organization focused on a common theme. And, you know, your organization will then really be able to become extraordinary. So creating this strategy within your business or team Uh, for developing a high trust, high performing culture is really an important aspect of accelerating uh, the really the creation of a high trust organization. And what I like to do is create a, a strategy based on your business and where you're at and where you want to go that begins to create a trust competitive advantage. And, uh, you know, it really is in, in the marketplace, or it could be just with your customers, with your passengers, with the people that you serve or want to serve, need to serve. And so with that, you create a 12 month plan uh, with goals and then actions And these are all working to level up trust in those areas where you have the greatest need, or you can get the greatest, highest return on investment. So you want to be able to focus the the efforts. uh, And of course, there's the values that will be everywhere. But for this, we want to focus it on a few things in the business that we are going to level up trust because we know it has a great return for us and there's a great need for it. Now you can hold a trust workshop to develop this plan with all of your key employees. uh, So they co-create the plan. You'll see that one of the uh, partnering principles is that people don't argue with what they help to create. 
Also, there's a collective wisdom. I mean, all the principles play out here as to why I recommend that you get a group of key employees and, the, and you may end up having to do more than one workshop so that if you're a very large organization, you want to do one that's like a super ordinate for the whole organization. But then if you have divisions or units, uh, you, you might want to, or districts, you might want to do one for each district so that it's all congruent, all in alignment, and they have helped to create it because then they will be committed to it. And that really does make a huge difference because they know what it is, they know why it is, and they take ownership. And when they take ownership, amazing thing happens. They actually implement and they, it happens, can happen pretty quickly. So with the trust workshop, you know, it isn't a, it isn't a huge uh, endeavor. It's, you know, a one day workshop where uh, you can create it and then uh, making sure that you have alignment and then some way to measure how well it's going. So I really think that uh, without a trust strategy, it can be pretty hard to get everyone aligned behind the initiatives that are needed to create a high trust, high performing uh, organization or team. So by using these three steps, you will do a great deal to drive out fear from your business or your organization or team. You can start with just one step at a time and prove to yourself that it really works. And I think that's a great way to start. So I, what you might be wondering, you know, what is possible in a high trust culture? So you might be thinking, well, why the heck should I do this? So I thought I'd make a list of some things that I have seen happen in organizations that shifted and became high performing. So here's, here's some things that I've seen. Um, well, they get high trust results. And, uh, and, and that really means that they're optimizing. And you'll see that in some of the other lists here. Um, they have less stress and frustration. And that's from the top down to the bottom down. Uh, everyone feels less stress because they're more assured on what they need to do. And they have more clarity on the purpose and function and what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, you get increased employee satisfaction, which is pretty important these days as we have the great resignation and people are looking to have greater satisfaction in their work lives. You get customer loyalty. People trust you and they want to continue to have a relationship with you because you're doing a great job. You get higher margins. You're more effective. You're more efficient, better, smarter, faster. You can stand out from your competitors. So for those of you who are in a marketplace, but you know, even, even the government entities are in a marketplace, the external factors put pressure on your business so that you need to adjust to what the new requirements are or what the new pressure is. So you want to be able to stand out and be you know, the top performer and I know that government agencies can absolutely do this. I've seen it. It's phenomenal. Uh, you can advance your career. And I see this all the time. People who know how to create a high trust environment are invaluable to any and every organization. And I see them often uh, go pretty quickly up the ladder. Uh, become the beloved leader in your market or your industry. So when you, when you do a great job in your business or your, or your organization, people are going to take note in your industry as well. And, and then you, you, you can have more influence or you can just be able to do more to help the industry uh, or lead the industry. You will be more nimble, flexible, cohesive, uh, so that this allows, as I was talking about before, uh, scaling, scaling up or scaling down or responding to a crisis, as we talked about, uh, more effective or efficient uh, in your policies, practices and processes, and that they are based on the collective wisdom of your team. You'll have improved 
customer satisfaction as well. Not just employees are happier, customers are happier. We talked about loyalty, but loyalty is one thing. If they're really happy, like they're, they're telling other people about what a great job you did, uh, that's something. And of course, really all this wraps up into you'll have a reputation and you'll have a reputation that attracts and keeps the best of the best people, the best customers, and you'll have an organization that is really making a difference. So I thought I'd also talk a little bit about um, ways that you as a leader might feel different as you transform your business. And I think this is pretty fun too. So imagine feeling excited and thrilled with your business or your team. You wake up and that's how you feel. And that you no longer stay awake at night worrying about things. You are confident that you really have a great team. You're confident in them. You trust that there is a collective wisdom and you know how to tap into that. You have trusted leaders at all levels of your business that you can depend on. Opportunities just seem to come to you. You have never been so happy with how things are going. And you are doing more than you ever thought was possible. Those are all the things that I have seen and experienced. And that is my wish for you. But I think I also need to share with you what I have seen in organizations that have a lot of fear in their team and their organization. What happens then? What did they experience? So one of the things I see all the time is silos or turf wars so that everyone is just hunkered down in their own little world and they may not even be all that aware that there's a larger organization or a larger purpose and uh, often fighting with each other uh, when someone steps, gets in within their realm uh, because they are protecting their own turf. Uh, people and teams are defensive. You know, they're defending their, their turf, they're defending their position, they're defending their systems and processes, they're defending, they want to keep everything the way it is. You know, when you're defensive, you're adversarial, so you're working against each other. I see a lot of local optimization. So you're in, a, you're in your own little world and you want to keep it the way that it is. So you're working to optimize to get better, but you only get better in your own little world, not that it's the whole world. So the business isn't really optimized. It's this little one little piece. And that is never what is best for the business. You'll see poor communication that grows into lack of coordination that then turns into conflict. You'll see these organizations and teams become stuck in a pattern of low productivity. And as I talked about it before, as you get this rolling, you'll actually see teams, units, divisions that actually work against each other and eventually implode in some manner, which then usually creates a crisis. Uh, and, uh, and then sometimes people are fired. Sometimes someone comes in to try to change things up. But a lot of time, all it does is it entrenches everyone to just be more fearful. And you can see the cycle just continues, maybe gets worse. And of course, if all of this continues, the business, and the jobs the people have who they're trying to protect uh, are at risk. The whole, I've seen whole organizations totally wiped out. So I think that it's so worthwhile to use these three steps to really work to create a high trust environment, a high trust culture, using the partnering approach where you create your, use the principles to create your intentions and use the values to create your belief system. 
and I have seen amazing things happen. So that is my wish and hope for you. And I will see you again next week. Take care. Okay, Construction Nation, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Lead with Trust. Will you do me a favor? If you think this episode can help anyone on your team or business, please forward it to them. Please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And your honest review, hopefully five stars, is much appreciated. Every leader who learns how to build their business and projects on a foundation of trust is going to reap the rewards of greater productivity, attracting the best of the best, enjoying your business more, and doing things you thought were impossible. If you want to know where you are in your trusted leader journey, I have a free resource for you. Please just go to sudico.com slash profile, S-U-D-Y-C-O dot com slash profile. And you can grab it there and find out where you are on your trusted leader journey. And so that is a wrap for today. Can't wait until I get a chance to hang out with you again next week. And until then, have a great day.